friends, you're listening mm-hmm. and watching Rashkin Report, and I'm your host, Yuri Rashkin. I am excited to welcome to the program Ksenia Kirillova. Ksenia, uh, well, first of all, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Ksenia you nice is uh, absolutely. Ksenia is an independent journalist, originally from Sverdlovsk, who, uh, Russia, who has been living in the United States since 2014. And Ksenia has written extensively, as her bio says, hundreds of articles. I do not doubt it for a second. Uh, she's quite prolific. And um, she wrote a very interesting article um, regarding the ideology um, that Russia currently is looking to export. And this is something that um, we're going to be discussing on the program today. Uh, Ksenia, I'm looking at this article, and it's quite thorough as all your work is. And um, you, you draw a lot of very important distinctions why um, what Russia is selling actually isn't really palatable or welcomed by those that it is selling it to, if they really think about it. But can you talk about what is Russia's vision of how they can use propaganda and ideology uh, to promote um, their agenda? And what is that agenda, you know? Yes, because uh, it's even uh, some difference between uh, propaganda and, uh, I would say, informational operation. Because what Russia really does now against the West, we can call it uh, not only uh, propaganda in its classic meaning of uh, this word, but uh, some kind of informational operation. And uh, we should make some distinctions between um, Russian disinformation in in the form of, uh, we can say, informational noise, so it means uh, different versions of reality, it's a lie, it's a slander, it's something that aimed to destroy critical thinking at all. It's uh, one part. And the second part, you uh, were absolutely right, it's uh, some specific ideologies for export. And what is different uh, of current Russian propaganda, which uh, contains ideologies for export, with uh, the Soviet one, for example, that uh, Soviet propaganda um, targeted specific group in the West, people of left views, of communist views, some uh, Soviet supporters, but mm, Current Russian propaganda uh, tries to uh, create alternative realities uh, for different social groups. And yes, I call them ideologies for export because they were created especially for specific uh, social groups on the West. It is an interesting point because if mm-hmm. uh, if one is to examine Russia, then there is very little ideology that is actually present in Russia itself. So if there is an ideology, it pretty much has to be for an export as an export product because uh, Russians really don't have that communism that they used to. Um, you know, there is no ideology in Russia except for maybe money and fear. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Uh, you are absolutely correct. Uh, for example, many uh, Western journalists and uh, political analysts mentioned Alexander Dugin, uh, a creator of some Eurasianist ideology, and uh, many people uh, mistakenly uh, declared that uh, this is a new Russian ideology, like orthodox, traditional values, and some uh, kind of white uh, supremacism in Russian style, imperial Eurasian style. But uh, you yourself visited Russia, and I think you can confirm that uh, ordinary Russians almost don't know who Dugin is, and they definitely don't believe in any kind of ideologies, and even um, don't know uh, his system. So uh, this ideology was created especially for radical rights on the West, including in the United States, and many American investigative journalists um, have already described connections between American radical rights, including Duke and other uh, radical rights leaders with Dugin. Uh, but but Russia, it was- Russia itself actually does not... Um, follow the, the what right in the West believes. It's actually very much opposite of that. Um, yes. Uh, 
what I uh, just <laughs> wanted to say uh, that these ideologies contradict uh, not only uh, realities in Russia, it contradicts uh, sometimes each other. For example, yes, for radical rights, they created this kind of ideology. For people more educated in a religious, they created a uh, more Christian version of uh, this ideology. Um, and uh, But uh, when they support left, radical left, especially in Europe, of course they try to create Russia as a kind of post-Soviet uh, mm, country which still has some element of old Soviet system. And uh, it's very curious to watch how Russia works with Russian diaspora abroad, including here in the United States. You know that uh, even Russian supporters here are very divided. For example, some people have strong nostalgia of the Soviet Union. They came to the United States mostly just because of collapse of the Soviet Union. It was the only uh, the only reason for immigration. And another uh, part of uh, Russian community here, it's um, uh, descendants of uh, the old white guard, uh, descendants of people who escaped from Bolsheviks during the Russian Civil War. And uh, these people have opposite, uh, absolutely the opposite views regarding uh, Soviet past. Some of them admire the Soviet past and some uh, they really reject everything which connected to the Soviet past. But both groups, they approved current Russian aggressive policy. And, for example, working with and uh, both these groups, they hate um, modern liberal and uh, Democrats and they uh, support Russian aggressive policy in Ukraine and they support current Russia. So, um, uh, for communists, uh, for people with communist views, uh, Russia declares that uh, the Russia is a, um, a direct um, descendant, a I think, of uh, hair of uh, successor of the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. and um, um, for and that uh, liberal views were created by the enemies of the Soviet Union, by uh, damned imperialist and liberal West, but um, for descendants of the White God, for example, they declare that a liberal world order is a direct consequences of um, communism. So, up absolutely the opposite. Uh, about Ukraine, it's also funny. For example, for communists, uh, they say that, of course, uh, current Ukraine is an enemy because it tries to destroy all uh, el uh, Soviet element and tries to break all the connection with the Soviet past. But um, for white God, people for monarchist, they say that in opposite, Ukrainian independence is a direct consequences of Soviet past. And even Ukrainian language is direct consequences of what communists did. did. So uh, we see that it's absolutely the opposite. Uh, the same thing with uh, American radical rights. For example, probably you heard about Liga of South organization. Uh, last year, they created a Russian page on the website they uh, with the title to our Russian friends and um, uh, they um, called Russians to cooperate and they uh, declared that they ha uh, had similar values and uh, common roots and common Christian civilization. By the way, it was um, um, relatively well written, so almost without mistakes in Russians. Probably they have a, a native uh, language, uh, uh, 
a native speaker uh, who helped them to translate it. Anyway, uh, if you uh, learn the ideology, uh, you can discover that it's absolutely opposite to current realities in Russia. Uh, for example, these people even consider an American government as a repressive one, and they uh, call for more freedom, more independence to local authorities. Um, they call for and this is this is American right we're speaking about. That this is what they want. They want more local control. They want more freedoms. They feel oppressed. Go ahead. And of course, and of course, they want a uh, uh, freedom of. Uh, gun, uh, guns uh, were in threats. And uh, of course, it's impossible in Russia because the Russian government is afraid even of uh, peaceful uh, school children who <laughs> attend some uh, non violent, peaceful protest action. They will never allow. Um, uh, they will never allow uh, people to carry guns freely. And by the way, uh, League of the South calls for independence of uh, um, southern states, uh, actually for separatism. But you know that um, uh, Russian authorities already uh, started criminal cases and accused many people in uh, separatism. So uh, in um, if uh, they, uh, these people from League of the South lived in Russia, they would face with criminal charges during the, the first day in Russia. <laughs> because in Russia, all what they do, all the views, uh, it's illegal. It's uh, the reason of uh, criminal prosecution. Sure. So, Ksenia, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. um, listening to this, yes, you, I think, first of all, I want to thank you for doing this interview in English because this is not your first language and, and neither <laughs> mine. But the information that you have is extremely important, especially for English speakers, because Russian language speakers have a pretty good understanding of what's going on with Russian ideology and propaganda because we've experienced important to, I think, share this story. Now, when we look at uh, the, the radical right, um, they, I think, you know, I, I would uh, allow for possibility that they understand that Russia is really not the things that they're fighting for. Um, but uh, as we see with Radical Right, they have made a, already a pretty big bargain with uh, Donald Trump because Donald Trump yeah. doesn't follow a lot of the things that they want, but he supports the ideas that they like. And it's this exchange of, fine, you may not be what we're looking for, but at least you're providing support, uh, is, is a really important, uh, I think, feature. And um, it almost, in kind of a perverted way, reminds me of how Jews, for hundreds of years, were hoping to have a homeland, a home, there's a state of our own, and then, you know, there's a state of Israel that Jews are always welcomed in, and it's a kind of a wonderful thing to know that there's this homeland that people can go to. And it seems like Russia became this homeland state headquarters for all sorts of crazy, um, radicalized folks all over the world. So, you know, it serves a purpose because it basically provides an alternative to whatever else the mainstream is. So if you have America providing, you know, being the, the main uh, country, you know, you know, the superpower, then you just need to have something that's opposite and so russia really doesn't have to do anything other than to say if you're against america if you have a problem with what's going on in the united states you're welcome here um do you know do you see a point in that or, or how do you look at it yes yes uh you're absolutely right uh the point is that the main goal of russia is to destabilize the west and of course uh in order to fulfill this uh, task russia supports all radical elements around the world and uh, inside the united states so of course they support not only radical uh, rights, but even they use radical left. The only difference is that um, Russian ties with American radical rights uh, is, um, is direct ties, but uh, Russia doesn't have uh, a ready ideology for export for American radical left, but they uh, definitely use 
them just to scare. I, I think they are uh, trying because Russia does have some pretty strong, at least on the surface, on the face of it, a very strong uh, social safety net. There is supposedly free health care. There's, you know, there's lots of services that government supposedly provides, even though it seems like as time goes on, those services get worse and worse to the point that people are literally leaving the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there, there is something, you know, following your logic that they are able, it seems like, to present to the West for, for the radical left folks. Yes, uh, the only difference in the United States, because uh, in Europe, Russia has direct connections with radical lefts in Europe, but here in the United States, uh, Russia prefers uh, to approach radical left under the false flag, because they don't support Donald Trump and they don't support Russia, uh, because of all this uh, um, story about the possible connections. So. Uh, but anyway, of course, Russia tries to support the views and at the same time uh, to, uh, to use them to scare um, radical rights. So to represent uh, radical left views as a picture of the opponents. So look, uh, you should support Trump, you should support Russia, otherwise these people will win. And it's also uh, some kind of alternative reality because on the democratic uh, part of political spectrum, people with very different views, uh, with moderate views, and actually a radical um, left, they have some anarchist views, so they don't have political representatives because they mostly consider every kind of government, every kind of states as evil, and they were against uh, the government even under Barack Obama's rule. So uh, it's uh, just uh, not not true uh, to say that uh, conservative opponents in American policy are radical lefts. Radical lefts is a different phenomenon. But yes, they try to use it to present, to scare people, uh, to increase the fear and phobias. And now we uh, moved to a point of a structure of creation these ideologies for experts. Because yes, they were very different. Sometimes they contradict each other and contradict realities inside Russia. But they have some single principle and algorithm of construction. First of all, and yes, the goal is to support all radical views to increase people's fears, phobias. They appeal to emotions, not uh, to some strong wo- 